lounge <laughs> for a spiritual revolution. So it's a lounge, we're lounging here, but it's a big revolution going on. <laughs> so the beginning of spiritual, spiritual revolution, it begins within. <laughs> so Gandhi, Gandhi said that if you want to make a change in the world, How's it go if you want to be the change 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 that you want to see see in the world? So therefore, if we want to change the world and make it a better place, we got to become better people. We have to become better in what we do and what we are. So that's spiritual evolution. So generally, we have a tendency to blame our unhappiness on others. We think, okay, I'm not happy. It's your fault. Because it's because of this, it's because of the government, it's because of politics. Yeah, so actually it um, has a lot to do with our state of mind, our state of consciousness. So we could actually be on the Him- Himalayan mountains and we could be dressed in a beautiful flowing robe and there could be beautiful mountains. You can maybe even see the stars because it's so high up there, it's so beautiful. And there could be clouds, and the sun is just like peeking. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have a good company, <laughs> then what if you co- have a bad travel companion? <laughs> then they'll be like, "I don't like this mountain. <laughs> why does the cloud? Why does the cloud have to be this color? And why do you gotta wear that? Why do you gotta dress like? There's always something wrong, right? So, <clears throat> according according to our company. We could be in the most beautiful place in the entire world. It could be so serene, but if we don't have the right company, it could be really mundane, right? So, <clears throat> has anyone ever lived with a, I guess you would say, bad roommate? <laughs> or, let's say, a difficult roommate? <laughs> okay, what's that like? It's tough, right? Nightmare. That's a nightmare. <laughs> so, it's, maybe they're not clean. They're dirty, or you mark your milk, you put your name on it, or and then they take it, <laughs> or I don't know, you know, they're ungrateful, maybe they're verbally abusive, who knows, it's terrible. So the Vedic knowledge, the Vedic knowledge, the Sanskrit knowledge of India says, actually, each one of us are living with a roommate inside this body, want to take a guess? Uh, it's the mind so we have this body we're in there with the soul and the spirit but we're living with the mind so uh, it's stated that the mind is our best friend or the mind's our worst enemy so actually every one of us has a roommate think like that this is the roommate of the mind so hopefully he's a good roommate (laughs) so Nat- uh, naturally, water, you could say water in its natural state is liquid, right? So we have liquid in a natural state, water. This is water. When water freezes, it's ice. So it's kind of unnatural. But the natural state of water is to be liquid, correct? So this is dharm- This is one explanation of dharma. Dharma means the natural state of something. So naturally, we're actually happy. Each one of us wants to be happy, and we're actually happy beings. We're peaceful, we're loving, we're happy. That's who we are. We don't have to become peaceful. We don't have to become happy. We don't have to become more loving. It's That's what we are. But if you're living with a bad roommate, like you have that bad companion, he's giving you trouble. Oh, I don't like this. I'm unsatisfied with this. If you only have this, you better... The mind's just going crazy. So the mind could be our best friend or best enemy. So the problem is that, okay, spiritual revolution does begin within, but it doesn't stop there. We have to also look outside. So this culture makes it very difficult to have a peaceful mind, isn't it? When I was little, I was eight years old, I'm watching the TV, and I'm just like minding my own business, you know, doing homework or whatever I have to do. Commercial comes on, blam, get this new action figure, you know, it's so cool, you got to have it. And I start thinking, oh... Interesting. What is this? I've never seen this before. So it's like, oh, you gotta have it. All the kids are playing with it, and all the kids. And I'm like, oh, 
Interesting. So go back to my thing. Over the course of a month, they keep running that commercial. Then I'm pretty soon like, oh, I gotta have that thing. Everyone has it. And then Christmas is coming. So then mother's like, okay, what do you want? It's like, oh, I want that thing. You right? So based upon what we're seeing on television, for example, just an example, we're seeing something, we're associating our mind and our senses with something. And then we're associating with it, and then a, de a desire develops. So what happens when it comes Christmas time? Who's, who's going to give that thing? Mom and Dad. So what do they have to do to get it? They have to go to work, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> this is a really relevant point, actually. Uh, it's very practical. This society creates all the kind of things that we don't need. Like, without that action figure or whatever toy it was, Malibu Barbie, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> whatever it was that you wanted so bad for Christmas when you were eight years old, we could have lived perfectly fine without it, right? But because we saw that commercial a billion times, we started like, oh, pacing, anticipating, oh, I gotta have it. Please, mom, please, I gotta have this. And she's like, fine, okay, I'll get it. And then, she, and then finally you get it. So this culture is a culture of materialism, industrialism. What is industrialism? It produces a bunch of things that we don't actually need. So here's the catch. The more we produce things that we don't actually need, the less we actually produce things that which we do need. So this is a culture based of industrialism, materialism. So we can't have land. We can't have normal jobs. You can't have a normal job. You have to get a technical job and you have to keep up with the pace of everything. And then you can't grow food. You can't grow your food. You can't, it's practically impossible to own your land. You have to pay somebody. It's just so difficult. So the things which Earth naturally has given us, land, grains, water, jewels from the ocean, all the beautiful natural things, which are 100 million times the population, we can just supply everything. We don't have those things. Why? We're busy chasing uh, boy band CDs, <laughs> lipstick, big screen TVs, monster trucks, you name it. It just, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. All this is crap that you don't need. Then, after some point, you get it. Oh, it's so great, I got it. Toss it away. And then we have a huge pile of garbage somewhere that nobody sees. And it's just piling up. So this is our culture, materialism. So the earth has given us everything that we need. But the problem is we're not satisfied with everything that, that the earth has given us. So there's enough for our needs, but there's not enough for our greed. <laughs> Don't know that one? So, uh, there's enough for our need. No, you blew it. You said needs. Oh, <laughs> so it didn't, so it didn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, needs? <laughs> so there's not enough for the artificial needs. So our mind is our friend when the mind can become satisfied with basic necessities of life. That is having the best friend that you will ever have in this society, in this world. To be happy with simple things, things which money can't buy. Friendship, love, wisdom, knowledge. You can't buy those things with money. But we can't live without those things. But you can live without back street boys CD or whatever. <laughs> Whatever it is, whatever the fat is, the new pants, the boots, you know, whatever it is, you can live without it. But you can't live without love. You can't live without friendship, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Why am I existing here? So this is spiritual knowledge, spiritual revolution. So basically, the simple solution is that we're very impressionable. So, in other words, whatever we associate with, we become. So the answer is simple. If you go to a bar, then everyone's drinking and partying. Most likely you're probably going to do that too. If you go to a business meeting, everyone's talking about money. And they're like, mm -hmm. So you're going to be like catching that scene. You know, it's a scene. So wherever you go, there's an association where people are cultivating desires. So if we want to cultivate spiritual desires, then we should associate with others who are doing that too. And it becomes very easy. And in, that, in this association, we can cultivate the proper desires, 
how to be satisfied, how to live simply, how to live a, a more natural life, things like this. Then we're living <coughs> with the best friend, the mind. So, thank you very much. Is there any comments or questions or something I said you'd like to reflect on or share? Part about um, when you hang out, you always similarly to do that thing that um, yeah. uh, with me. Um, I I ascended over drinking uh, over ten years ago. I just whoop, I'm not drinking anymore. No way. Um, I can still hang out in clubs and stuff and dance and stuff. And um, mm. I'm, uh, my attunement is already higher. So they, they can't uh, well, you're probably giving them your yeah. association. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're when they meet you, then they're, they're becoming more spiritual. So that's a good thing. Is if somebody has, like you said, has good strength, then they can they can even go in those places and they can elevate people to more develop more awareness. But at the same time, uh, you'd be surprised sometimes. If we're too proud, we think, oh, I'm, I'm so spiritual, I can... And you might actually, you know, somebody's really cool, like influential, be like, hey, I have it. Or whatever it is, you know, then you're like, okay. You know, then. So, but, uh, but yeah, generally, wherever we associate with, we become like, so we, you know, we should be aware of that so we can be conscious of our influence. So we, we imbibe the proper influence. That's the spirit of... Okay, anything else? So how to make the mind one's friend? How to make the mind one's like friend? The ways it can become an enemy, but how to make it. Well, I mentioned a couple things. Is materialism, industrialism, it's based on one thing. Producing things that we, we don't really need. So we have to place value on stuff that we really actually need. It, inalienable goods, inner assets, things which you cannot buy with money, but you cannot live without. Friendship, loyalty, having, being a loyal friend to somebody, for example. That's a, it's, it's an asset. To be able to be loyal, to be trustworthy, trusting, to be forgiving, to be a forgiving person. This isn't, these are assets that we can cultivate. So, but you can't buy that with money. It's like, oh, I want to be a truthful person. Here's a thousand dollars. Give me it. You, know? you can't do that. So, so in other words, to make the mind your friend is to cultivate good qualities within yourself. And when you cultivate good qualities by associating with others who have those, who also have inspiring qualities, then naturally your mind suggests, because the mind makes suggestions. Oh, do this, go here. Oh, you don't want that. Oh, you want that. All right. I don't like this. I like that. So the mind's making suggestions, but if you make it clear in your personal life, I want to go upward. I want to make advancement. I want to develop these good spiritual qualities. Then you place emphasis on that which deserves it. But if you place emphasis on material things, yeah, I just want short-lived, temporary pleasure. I don't care what it costs. You know, I don't care who I have to cheat. I don't care who what I have to get. Then you develop all these negative qualities, and the mind just gets you in more and more trouble. So <laughs> it's within our own interest, actually. <laughs> so that's what I would say. Anyone else can toss something in there? Hard work. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you very much for your attention.